next manipulation is the is for the first uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint, first MTP joint. Um, here, uh, Terry's a little restricted at, at 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 this joint on the left foot. The right one does exhibit full range of motion. If Terry, if you put your foot together and you try to show the difference, it's, it's fairly substantial about the range um, and what that is. Shoot straight down. I think that'll help. You can really see the difference in that regard. Interestingly enough, the first MTP joint um, is helped when you manipulate the ankle first because the perineals are often inhibited when the ankle joint is, um, is restricted. And since the perineus longness comes under the foot and connects into the base of the first ray, it does help support this column and uh, is very effective in helping to manage that. But when motion is restricted, this is the technique. The idea is not so much to manipulate the first metatarsal phalangeal joint as much as to manipulate the metatarsal cuneiform joint. And so the way we do that is as follows. The toe is grasped with the fourth and the fifth fingers of the opposite hand. And it's, it's held and very gently tractioned in the long way. The opposite thumb is then moved up the web space until you reach the base of the first metatarsal, inner metatarsal space. And then from that point, the following is done. Terry, very gently pull up on your big toe, almost nothing, that's it, just a tiny bit, good. And now relax your foot, I got it, you hold it, and then you press up against the, the top of the first metatarsal at its cuneiform articulation. And you hold it gently, and then with a very gentle lateral thrust, you're going to push from lateral to medial across the side of the foot, no more than that. And what happens once that's done is that the range of motion returns to normal and is probably close to comparable to the other side now.